You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Innovative Dementia Care with your host, Susan Kohler, licensed and certified speech language pathologist and author of How to Communicate with Alzheimer's, Susan Kohler is here to help you, the caregiver. Learn about the communication process and useful techniques that will create a meaningful connection with you and your loved ones. So now, welcome the host of Innovative Dementia Care, Susan Kohler. Hi, everyone. I am Susan Kohler, and you are listening to Innovative Dementia Care. We're on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Well, last week, I talked a lot. <laughs> I talked a lot about the importance of good communication practices when you're caring for someone who's living with dementia. And that is because I believe that the foundation of care begins with good communication practices. Once you are able to create an emotional connection, a connection with someone using good communication practices, you will get safety and cooperation with care. It will also enhance the quality of your interactions. They'll be very heartfelt, very warm. It's a good feeling for both people. You see, dementia impairs thought and mental abilities, and this impairs communication. So a person who has dementia may not be able to tell you how they feel. They may not be able to tell you just what they're experiencing. And often the environment can get overwhelming and they might act out, whether it's verbally or non-verbally. And this becomes a challenge because we must determine What are the unmet needs at this moment for this person living with dementia and as a caregiver? How are we going to be able to discover what it is they're trying to communicate to us? What are they trying to tell us? So what you do first as a caregiver is you must create safety and gain cooperation for daily care, and you do that using good communication practices. You will be able to create what my colleagues and I call the emotional connection that creates the security and the acceptance to your efforts in caregiving. Now, some of you may remember that I have mentioned it is well documented in the literature that a caregiver's report that the biggest burden in caring for someone is the breakdown in communication. This is why we need to work to facilitate the communication between us, the caregiver, and the person that we are caring for. Now, as I said, we're devoting our time together to learning the practices or what I call the communication strategies. This is what you need in order to be able to experience the emotional connection and develop the skills to gain safety and cooperation with the daily caregiving activities. Now, I teach nine strategies, and they are found in my book, How to Communicate with Alzheimer's. And by the way, you can find the book by going to susankohler.com, and you simply click on a picture of the book. There you can spend some time looking through samples, some commentaries, some videos, and reviews. But let me say this about the communication strategies. As I said, I have nine strategies, and I teach 
the techniques in order to apply the strategies that create the emotional connection with the person in your care. Now, I think it's important to understand that these are techniques. And I want to emphasize that these are not tips. I want you to understand the difference between techniques and tips. And so I want to spend just a little bit of time talking about this. I think we sometimes take communication for granted. We think that it's just a simple little thing and we're right there. And I don't think that that's how we have to look at it, particularly if we're trying to make the connection with someone who has dementia or anyone who has faltering communication abilities. So for that reason, I really stress that you need to develop techniques. Keep in mind that Tips are just little bits of information. That's all it is. But a technique is a skill required to do a task. And in this case, it's the task of communicating with someone who has deteriorating abilities. Let's look at this for just a second. If I were to say you've you've got your kitchen dining room area and you would love to maybe do something different with it. You want to paint it, for example. And uh, I tell you, you know, that, that wall there that you want to paint would be great with a textured look. Now, me giving you that, that little bit of advice there, a textured look, I consider that just a little tip. Wouldn't that be nice? Think about that. Okay. Use, do a textured look. But Unless I tell you how to achieve the textured look, you won't be able to do that task of painting the wall. Likewise, you would need to have some instruction to try out how to make that textured look so that you could complete your task of painting the wall with this nice look that you're trying to achieve. So you won't get that desired result until you know how to apply the technique. So you have to take a little time and effort to master and feel comfortable implementing this little technique of trying to create texture on your wall. And that to me is the same about using good communication practices. You've got to take the communication techniques, you got to apply some effort, some time, spend a little bit uh, of reflection on how a connection went because the nuances of human interaction will make the process challenging at times. But if you practice the techniques, you're going to find out what you will need to do in order to keep that connection, adjust the techniques as you need them, and when the connections are made, this will be very rewarding And then the other part of this is if you get good at communication practices, if you use the strategies and you are able to get that person cooperating with their daily routine with you, your caregiver burden is going to be reduced. I definitely guarantee that for you. So I know that's a long explanation, but often I have to really convince people that just having a list of 10 bullet items on a page about how to communicate is really not enough to let you move forward in becoming a good communicator using good practices, using the strategies, understanding when the connection is made, understanding when you have to go back and reinforce it, understanding when you've got someone that you need to adjust your agenda with, that you need to look at what their unmet needs are and go with where they are at the moment. This takes the good effort, the time with the communication practices. So I want you to keep that in mind. I want you to be able to understand that it's important that we look at how we apply the communication techniques. Now, we are going to spend some time today talking about our caregiving in terms of a routine. There's a whole chapter in my book devoted to how to make your day successful, 
how to apply techniques that are used in order to help someone have a a success in their day, have them really be present with you and have them have a little more assurance and security about what may be going on. So we're going to make sure that we spend some time talking about that today. This will be a very important session, and I hope that you'll be able to perhaps take a few little notes here and there of just key words that will help remind you that it's important that we look at how we're going to approach our day in caregiving. All right, we're going to take a short break. I'm your host, Susan Kohler. You're listening to Innovative Dementia Care. We're on BBM Global Network, Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of those tactics that will make your day easier, more focused, even perhaps a little more organized. Don't we all need that? So please, don't go away. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 B.C. when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Hi, everyone. We're back. I'm Susan Kohler. You are listening to Innovative Dementia Care. We are coming to you from BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Now, just before the break, I mentioned that we're going to explore some notions that will make your day easier, more focused. It will improve your interactions. All together, this will improve your efforts in caregiving. Now, there's a section in my book called Working with the Communication Strengths of the Person in Your Care. And this whole chapter we're going to talk about a little bit here today. This is what's so important to understand, even though the disease process is progressive, it does continue, and people's ability to communicate seemingly is worse, but their ability to connect is still there with you, especially if you use the communication strategies that we've started to talk about. But I want to talk to you about some ideas with caregiving because of the way people will respond to your care. This is called working with the brain that remains. There's a wonderful publication called Wiser Now. This particular publication was devoted to providing families and professionals with information and activity sources for people who were caring with people living with dementia. And in every issue they had, working with the brain that remains, because in spite of the deteriorating skills of those people with dementia, there are clearly skills that remain somewhat intact, even, believe it or not, even until the later stages. And I call these communication strengths. These are 
excellent sources for using the strategies to facilitate communication. Because remember, the importance of facilitating communication is our first goal, is to create that connection when we're providing care. This will help you do it, understanding some of these strengths. So we will always have to probably adjust to the needs of this person once we discover their strengths, which ones come the best and the easiest for this person, what kinds of things they respond to the most consistently. So these are easy to identify, and in time, you'll know just what they are and how effective they can be to facilitate your interactions and to get understanding, and to get just positive exchanges and enjoyment in activities together. So I'm going to share with you, they're very, very simple. I want you to write down the word routine. Everyone likes a routine. This is one of the first strengths I talk about when I'm doing my workshops. Routine. There's a security in the familiar knowing the what, the where, the when of how things are going to happen. And this is so true for our elderly. They have established routines of daily rituals in their personal care, which could be things like grooming and dressing or eating meals, things they like to eat, things they like to do. For example, certain social activities. Perhaps they've always liked going to the park. And when they do, they want to sit on the same bench, see the same group of people that they've chatted with. These routines are embedded in their days for many, many years. And you know, when they have comfortable routines like this, they can do them without thinking too much. They don't have to make any new decisions. They feel secure in their day because they know relatively what's going to happen. So think about that. We're not putting them in a position to make decisions. We're letting their day go on and that's comfortable for them. If you were to take away the routine, if you take away what is familiar, in other words, you now have a person that I say is working without a net. We've placed them in a situation that is going to require new attention, new memory, and mostly it's going to let them, make them feel very uh, insecure. It, th there's uncertainty now in their situation. You remember we talked about the first strategy last week, that you have to work at gaining someone's attention, that they need to be present with you in the environment and the techniques that we apply to do that. So if we are putting them in a situation that requires this new way to look at something, it's initially going to be very difficult for them. So we have to help them establish a routine. That routine will come from you. Establishing a routine or helping to tap into what is already familiar and part of their routine will help facilitate the success in your daily activities and care. The other thing about a routine is it helps keep someone relatively oriented. We know that it's difficult to keep track of the day and the date and the time. Now, all of us have trouble with that. We all look at our cell phones anyway to do that. So you can imagine for someone who's struggling with communication and declining mental abilities, like someone with dementia, that having a, a routine helps orient them to their day, their time, because certain things will happen that will keep them connected to their environment. So they become a little more successful being able to know the time of day or generally, the, pretty much the perhaps even the day of the week, because they have a routine. So if you are helping to establish and keep a routine one of the things you'll find is that certain activities at certain times of the day, if you get that established as part of the routine, this will definitely reduce restlessness and it will also create security. A person will feel comfortable knowing that something is coming that they're going to be part of that they enjoy because that's part of their routine. Now, my mother is... Uh, uh, 
in actually she's back east i live on the west coast And she is in a facility right now where she's gone through a continuum care community. And she really relies on the connection that she has to her family. And we've worked hard to keep that in her routine. So we're going to talk a little more about that when we come back. We're going to take another short break. And I want to share with you how these activities in this routine will work. You're listening to Innovative Dementia Care. I'm Susan Kohler. We're on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So after the break, we'll continue to explore the communication strengths, and I'll continue to share a story about my mother. Please stay tuned. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality based in quebec canada joanne is also a space coach using social media and skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world contact joanne charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca 819-360-3266 now is your time Hi, everyone. We are back. I am Susan Kohler, and you're listening to Innovative Dementia Care. We are coming to you from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Just before the break, we were talking about how important it is to establish a routine for someone who is living with dementia, that this provides a little bit of safety and security. It's just so comfortable knowing a little more about how your day is going It doesn't require you to have to make any decisions. Uh, It doesn't uh, put you in a spot where you're not sure what's going on. It doesn't give you any chance to feel uncertain. If your routine is set, it's good. And it's up to us, the person who's the caregiver, to be the facilitator of this routine. And I wanted to share you just a quick example about my mother who, when she was still able to be at the assisted living Uh, floor. I would call her every day. Part of this is because I wouldn't always get back to the East Coast to see her in person. So when I wasn't there, I called her every day. And I called her at the same time every day. And what I soon discovered is that as this routine became very comfortable for her, she literally sat down right next to the phone at that same time every day because she knew it was going to ring. And I, luckily, without fail, always called her uh, within a reasonable amount of this time that we had set together. And she would even say, she says, I'm sitting here looking at the phone, waiting for your call, and here you are. So you can see how important it is that establishing a routine and letting them also have success in that routine makes them feel good. We're going to continue on with the communication strengths. So we have the word routine. I hope you wrote that down, routine. Think about how you're going to establish a routine. The next thing is recognition. Recognition is also something that creates routine and familiarity. 
it's important to us that this brings security. When we recognize something, we feel good. For the person with dementia, recognition will help them interact. It will help them be present. And most importantly, it will help them feel safe. You have to remember that perhaps for someone who is living with dementia, if they're not present in their environment, if they're not quite connected to you, you're, you could be someone they've known for years, but you're going to feel unfamiliar to them until that connection is made, until you can see that there's recognition. So recognition takes a little time when you're established in the routine. You do a little repetition. You do consistency. Start with a little bit of what I call small talk. If you can come forward to someone, help them engage. In other words, remember strategy number one, get their attention. Help them to engage with you. This might be just like you're going to sit and talk like your good old friends for a moment. And this helps to establish then that sense as the frontal lobe starts to warm up to what's going on in the environment. Because recognition is strong, this is going to help them then be present with you. You can see recognition on someone's face. When I train nurses' aides at skilled nursing facilities, they are instructed to go in and do the very first strategy, get their attention. And then they tell me that as they get working together and they start to establish the connection, they see it on someone's face, in their eyes, that this is someone I feel familiar with. This is someone I feel safe with. I work with many people and families that are dealing with this situation. And often when I come forward, if I've had an opportunity to be with them on somewhat of a regular basis, they'll call me a cousin, they'll call me a daughter, they'll look at me and say, hey, I haven't seen you for years, how are you doing, as if I'm a neighbor or a good friend. And it doesn't matter what they're calling me as long as I see that they have recognition that I'm someone familiar to them. I'm someone that they feel positive about and I'm someone they can connect to. So this creates an immediate connection. Recognition is a very, very good strength to tap into. And it requires you to be what I call the next strength, consistency. So we have routine, we have recognition, and we have consistency. One of the best ways to capitalize on the strengths of someone living with dementia is use consistency. People really respond to consistency. They may not have the ability to learn something new, to learn a new procedure, as much as they have the ability to be conditioned to some new structure, routine, or new way of doing something. That's why you need consistency with your daily interactions and your activities with them. Building consistency now is going to take some planning and organizing. This is where I hope after today, after our time together today, you will sit down and look at your schedule. You will sit down and look at the activities you need to do. You will see that when it's time to get someone to the doctors, you're going to start to develop a routine that's going to be very consistent, that's going to help them know that they have to get ready for something. And in this case, it'll be go to the doctors. So you've got to get organized if part of your life involves taking care of someone living with dementia. Whether this is a family member, a friend, you need to get organized. It will reduce the burden for you. If you can be on top of this schedule, develop these consistencies, it's going to be easier for you in the long run. But it does take a little time to look at your schedule, figure out how you build the routine, establish the recognition, and then you may have to involve other people. This is part of that organization. And also look for other agencies that might be able to help you and support you. These are all available at your state and local level. So go ahead, I encourage you, 
get your schedule arranged. Once your routine is established, it will be so much easier. And you also will benefit from this consistency as well. It'll reduce the burden of guesswork, the burden of guilt from your days and your weeks. You will be able to work with this person knowing that you and that person have built in some good, strong consistency with routine and we are able to reinforce recognition. All right, we've got some more things like this to talk about. So we're going to take a quick break, but we will be back. You're listening to Innovative Dementia Care. I am your host, Susan Kohler. We're on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Hi, everyone. We are back. This is Innovative Dementia Care, and I am your host, Susan Kohler. We're on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Now, we've been spending a little bit of time exploring how we can use the strengths of someone who's living with dementia in our daily care routine. We talked about establishing a routine, how we need to build upon their recognition because that's a very strong trait for them, and how we must work towards consistency. Routine, recognition, and consistency. Think of those when you sit down with a little pencil or a little notepad and jot about your day and how you can work to make those things happen. So we're going to continue on now and talk about a few more of these communication strengths. I love this one. This one is called procedural memory. Procedural memory. It's a wonderful asset. This is, this is the memory system in, in all of us that acts like a computer. It stores the programs of how to do different functions, such as brushing our teeth, driving a car, making a cup of coffee with the coffee maker, or even playing the piano. This is the memory that helps a person with dementia, for example, know how to walk, although I know they, they may have balance problems. They may not know where they're going or they may just be kind of wandering. But the actual walking is a procedural memory trait. I mentioned that for someone like playing the piano – at a skilled facility that I used to uh, help uh, with some of the uh, staff, we found a woman who we realized had played the piano 
when she was younger. She was quite an accomplished pianist, actually. She was in her 90s, and she really didn't have much verbal output, but she did respond to the communication strategies to make a connection, and she loved part of her routine when we would let her walk over to a piano that had been donated to the facility and let her sit down and play. And her hands would just reach up and lay on top of that keyboard and then beautiful music would come out. And you could tell how enjoyable that was for her as well as for all of us listening. So that's an example of how to use procedural memory to provide some enjoyment in her day. And of course, the accolades that came from people who got to listen certainly were affirming to her. And she was successful then doing this. She was successful playing the piano piece that she had known for so long. You can help to facilitate certain tasks and activities that will use procedural memory to maintain function. In the case of our pianist, this maintained her ability to use her fingers, to use her hands, to play the music she loved. So this also gives a little bit of sense of independence. You know, she was very successful playing the piano, for example. It creates success in daily activities. Uh, for example, if someone is a wonderful cook, and they would not be necessarily now in a place where they can cook a full meal, uh, depending on where they're living or depending on certain physical uh, conditions. But perhaps they can be part of making a meal. If you're living with someone, then you're taking care of someone who has dementia perhaps stirring the batter, putting part of a sandwich together. What about setting the table? We all know how that goes. They may not be able to do all of it, but perhaps if you hand the plates, they can go ahead and set them in the proper place. Hand them the silverware one by one. They'll be able to place where that goes. You're tapping into their procedural memory. You're stimulating cognition. You're letting them do something they've always done. And it brings a lot of positive exchange between the two of you. Something like this, for example, setting the table, preparing part of a meal. You can adjust this all the time. Perhaps they'll be able to do less and less with you, but they could still be a part of it. They're still going to tap into being a part of the meal. And it's also going to help you build your routine. It's going to help the recognition because this is something they remember doing. You're going to help build now consistency in your daily schedule if this is part of what you do. I think it's important to think about procedural memory. It's very, very strong in people. For example, when I give my workshops, I tell people, if you want to know how strong your procedural memory is, I want you all to try this later today. If you brush your teeth with your right hand, I want you to switch it and put the toothbrush in your left hand and then try to brush your teeth. You'll find out it's a little bit of a challenge. So using procedural memory, using things that we can do for ourselves I know this was very important for my mother. We tried to keep her doing as much with her uh, ability to do some uh, uh, grooming, like brushing her teeth, like washing her face. She had a very, very uh, uh, concentrated routine that she loved to do about taking care of her skin. So we tried to keep those activities available to her as long as possible with our supervision. So think about this procedural memory. Think about something that requires little step-by-step -step that are very common activities that we're all involved in all day long. You can help the person with dementia to be a part of that in their day. Now, another communication strength, and I know we probably all know about this, is long-term memory. For the person with dementia, retrieving long-term memory events, early childhood, adult, and important events like weddings and things like that, they bring success in communication and great satisfaction with our interactions. These memories are pretty hardwired. Now, they may not be able to remember the name of their spouse, but they can tell you all about their wedding day, for example. And they will love to talk about that. I love trying to stimulate long-term memories. 
We're going to talk more about this in just a few minutes. So please, this is Innovative Dementia Care. I'm Susan Kohler. We're at BBM Global Network, Tune In Radio, and we're going to come right back and continue our discussion on long-term memory. Don't go away. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Hi, everyone. We are back. I'm Susan Kohler, your host for Innovative Dementia Care. We're on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Now, we were working with this whole idea of working with communication strengths that are found in building a routine, creating recognition, using consistency. We had a wonderful discussion about procedural memory. And I'd said those are those little step-by-step activities that we do. Someone who played the piano beautifully, that's procedural memory. Brushing your teeth is procedural. Now we're going to talk about long-term memory. We started to talk about this just before the break, that these are wonderful memories to bring up because people are successful trying to share that with you. And the idea of making the connection and building from that to develop rapport and keep the lines of communication open is to let them be successful in their communication efforts. And so sometimes this will mean that you're going to talk about events that happened. Uh, Events that happen, I keep uh, photographs around, I keep certain um, uh, items, even items that someone can tell me about and how they got it and where it, you know, where it is. People might repeat these stories a lot. It's one is because it's easy for them to do and they're successful at it. So I must must share with you the tendency is to say, well, you've already told me that. Try to stay away from that phrase. Make it positive. Just say it's wonderful. I love hearing that story. I love hearing it every time you tell me. It's wonderful. And that is a good, you can share about the activity. That was a beautiful wedding or that was an interesting activity we did. That was an amazing trip we took. So you can do that by stating something positive. And it doesn't hurt to listen to the story again, to let them feel positive and successful. Sometimes these long-term events, I must say, will become a little fragmented and they might not be entirely correct. I'm encouraging you not to correct anyone. Just go along and just say, that's wonderful. Because, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing to gain by correcting it. It's just how their memory is now being shared. So you need to relax and enjoy the positive experience that you have created facilitating these 
events that someone can talk about and you validate their efforts in sharing the stories with you. So long-term memory is something to think about that is very important. It is a very good strength. Now, there's one more little area I want to talk about. That's a strength. And some of you probably know this too. We talk about the importance of music in our lives. Reciting things and singing it really brings enjoyment People love to recite sayings or poems or sing songs. It brings tremendous joy and comfort. And it's a shared experience for the person, the listener, and the speaker. It'll stimulate emotion. It awakens expression. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't tell you how many times I have personally worked with individuals who it seemed could not utter a word but could easily break into a familiar song. And that ease of responding would facilitate more responses. And soon, you could start to develop even a little more exchange, like a conversation. I've also noticed that when I approach people who seem to have an expressionless face, if you get them involved with some music, some songs, or even some funny poems, you'll leave them smiling and feeling positive from the experience. People love the rhythm and the rhymes that go with song lyrics. So the also this holds true for uh, reciting poems, limericks, or jokes that make a pun out of language. These are definite favorites. Uh, I have a facility I go to, and I always try to have a few knock-knock jokes available. For example, knock-knock, who's there? Amos, Amos who? Amos behaving, saving my love for you. <laughs> as silly as that sounds, it creates a little bit of a chuckle and big smiles from people. They seem to enjoy the knock-knock jokes that I have. And what about a clever riddle? Something like, what did the light bulb say to the lampshade? You stay here. I'm going out for the night. This always makes them smile. And the nice thing is I can repeat these over and over again because of that, just like you can repeat songs over and over again. It's the rhythm and the feeling and the rhyming and the language that, that they enjoy. So reciting and singing. It's a wonderful way to use that in terms of communication strengths. From that, you build your connection and then using the communication strategies. And remember, we talked about the first one, getting their attention. This is when you approach someone. The first thing you do is you greet them. Because remember, you want to warm them up that you're in their environment now, that you're approaching, that you're friendly, that you're kind, and you're there to be with them. So you use a greeting. And then you make sure you are in front of them so they can start to see, hear, and process you. And then the third practical technique for get their attention is to make the eye contact. That way you can look at their face, read their expression, see where they're at, see if they're comfortable yet, see the recognition that we just talked about, if that is starting to emerge. And then the next technique is to wait. There you go. I made you wait, didn't I? Waiting slows down the encounter. Waiting helps you look at them, gives them time to process you and time to respond to you. And then the last strategy that we talked about, for the strategy to get their attention, the last technique is to direct that attention and that you'll have to redirect it because their attention may not hold, it might fade, or they might get distracted. So if you're approaching someone like this and then you keep in mind using the strengths in building your day with, let me just review this, routine, because that'll create security. Recognition, that will develop the routine and the familiarity. The consistency, that will help condition them to these routines and the behaviors you need with them. Using any activities that are from their procedural memories, which are the stored memories of how to do programs. The long-term memory to keep them positive and talking about their lives and sharing things that are important to them. 
And then using reciting and singing for just creating positive experiences with one another to have some entertainment and enjoyment. There are times I tell people they can leave a basket right by their bedside or right in their living room that might have maybe uh, books full of photos, music that they like, books that they like, little items that they like. I know that my mother doesn't remember things quite as well, but we can stimulate what's important to her with little objects that she loves. She collected teacups. And if you take one of her teacups and let her hold it in her hand, she can tell you so much about how she got and collected that particular teacup. It's wonderful. We're going to share more on this topic. So please don't go away. This is Innovative Dementia Care. I'm Susan Kohler, and I'm coming to you from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Please stay with us. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Welcome back, everyone. I am Susan Kohler, your host for Innovative Dementia Care on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Today, we've focused on dementia care in terms of working with the brain that remains to focus our caregiving efforts with the person's strengths that are found in recognition, routine, consistency, using procedural memory, long-term memory, and even having fun reciting and singing. I want to leave you with a short story today. Again, this comes from an experience I had with my mother. I think I mentioned before she's at a continuum care facility. And right now I'm on the West Coast and she is on the East Coast. She has moved from independent living to the assisted living level, and now she's on the skilled nursing floor. And each time she's made that move, she has had trouble adjusting again to the new routine, to have recognition with new staff. They've helped build that consistency and use the things that she enjoys doing, and they've done a wonderful job. So in her latest uh, level of care, she likes the staff that's there, of course, and they like her, and she is very comfortable there. She got an infection where she had to be sent to the hospital. Can you imagine? She's comfortable on her floor. They help take care of her. They do more things for her now because physically she needs more help. And then she had this bad infection. Here comes 911 call. Here comes the trauma and the noise of being put in the ambulance and taken to the hospital and being put in a room. This made her feel very uncomfortable. She was very quiet the first day. She didn't know what to do. The second day when they started to give her IV hydration, she started to perk up. 
she became just frightful. She would hold the phone when I would call her and she would say, I don't know what to do with this phone. And really what she's saying is, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm here. And she's saying, please help me. So I would spend a lot of time talking to her on the phone because I couldn't be back east for this particular event. And one morning I called her. This is the morning that she was ready to go back to her skilled nursing floor. And I need to tell you what happened was I called her. She did pick up the phone. She had the phone right there in her hand. Remember I told you we talk on the phone a lot and she always had a phone nearby. She'd always sit by the phone and wait for my calls. She picked up that phone and and she said hello. And I said, hi, mom, it's me. And there was silence. And this really tugged at my heart. And all of a sudden I heard sobbing. And I said, mom, you're okay. I'm here. I'm talking to you. Tell me what's going on. And through her tears, she finally was able to say these three words. And I want to share them with you. She said, I know you. And that was almost instantaneously relaxing her tears. Her tears were more of relief at that point. She was just kind of chuckling a little bit. I know you. So I hear in her voice, I need familiar. I need something familiar. I need to be where I feel comfortable and safe. And I need someone and something to connect to. That's what she was telling me in those three words, I know you. So I want you to think about this for the time that we have left and in the next week to come. Think about how can you help a person sense in their environment with you, I know you, I'm comfortable. Thank you so much. This is Susan Kohler. I'm your host for Innovative Dementia Care. We're on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I can't wait to talk to you all next week, so please be well. Thanks, everyone, for listening. You have been listening to Innovative Dementia Care with your host, Susan Kohler. For creative activities, solutions, and sensible strategies to help caregivers build a healthy foundation of care for your loved ones. Listen each week right here on Susan Kohler's Innovative Dementia Care. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.